us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Use me for your glory and your honor. Let me decrease and you increase. Anoint, O oh God, the word that is coming forth. Only with your anointing will it come with life and power, life-changing power, and life-giving power. Father, we thank you. And now, as you allow me to decrease and you increase, let the words be your words, the meditation be your meditation. I know your word will not come back void, but it will accomplish that which you have sent it to do. And I give you thanks and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Looking in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, verse 19, it says, while Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, behold, Three men are seeking you. And our emphasis is on the spirit said. The spirit said. And our subject title is when God speaks. When God speaks. Amen. When God speaks. This chapter is very, very unique and it lets us know that not only does the spirit speak to a situation, but also the spirit goes ahead and prepares the way for things to happen according to God's plan. Amen. Sometimes we can think that we are all by ourselves. We can think that God is not listening, but a lot of times God is not moving uh, for, per our perception, but uh, is going on ahead of us and preparing the way. Amen. God is going before us, preparing the way. God spoke to Cornelius and let him know that I hear your prayers. Somebody needs to know that today, that God's hearing your prayers. You may not see the evidence right now of God hearing uh, your prayers, but I assure you that if you belong to Christ, I'm a, I assure you that if the Holy Spirit is in you, the Holy Spirit is interceding on your behalf as well as Christ. That's Romans 8.26 and Romans 8.34. Christ is interceding and the Holy Spirit is interceding. And so it's a matter of God's timing. God's timing is always Good, Because God does not make a mistake. God does not move ahead, nor does he move behind. But he moves right on time. He moves right at the right moment. He moves right at the precise needed appointment. He will be there. When you uh, wait on the Lord, when you continue to pray, even though you don't see anything happening, even though you don't feel anything happening, even though it may feel like and look like nothing's going on, I assure you that God is hearing your prayers and they're coming up before him. This particular scripture lets us know, as the Lord told Cornelius, he said, I, your prayers have come up before God and your alms, meaning your giving, your service. You don't think serving God pays off? Serving God pays off. Even if nobody else appreciates it, God takes note of it. He lets us know that if you give a cup of cold water to one of his children, you will in no way lose your reward. God keeps an account of the goodness and the service that we do. And so we've got to be about serving God. We've got to be about 
doing what God has us to do, regardless of what we don't see, regardless of what may not be happening from our perspective. In heaven, God is doing some things, and he is allowing it to come to the earth and move on our behalf. Understand that Cornelius perhaps had been years and years giving stuff and giving things to people and serving people. Perhaps it was years when he uh, prayed to God and continued to pray to God and, and, and he didn't really see what happened. But what happens when you pray is not only does God go ahead of you, but God also changes you on the inside. There was something in Cornelius that kept him praying. There was something in him that kept him seeking God. There was something in him that kept him to kept him serving and kept him giving and kept him loving and kept him uh, moving forward. Some of us are have laid down on God because we're not seeing things happen in our lives. We're, 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 we're wondering where God is. We, we, we give every now and then. We read our Bible every now and then. We pray every now and then. But I want you to understand that God is looking for faithfulness. God is looking for faithfulness in your prayers. God is looking for faithfulness in your service. God is looking for faithfulness in your walk with him. Even when you don't see anything happening. Even when you don't feel anything happening. Even when it looks like nothing happening. I want you to look at this scripture and understand that God is a God that goes before you. And a God that goes behind you. And a God that goes beside you. God is going to make something happen on your behalf. You just have to be faithful to God. Many times we get disappointed. Things happen in our lives. And the first thing we want to do is move away from God. We want to give up on God. We want to give up on church. We want to become critical and cynical against God and against Jesus and against his movement. But I want you to understand. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one dot or tittle shall pass away that God won't fulfill. He's going to fulfill his word. And God let Cornelius know. He said, I, I've heard your prayers. You've been praying a long time. Some of us have been praying a long time. And it seems like God hadn't moved yet. I just want to admonish you and, and encourage you to keep praying because it's coming. If you're praying for big stuff, you got to wait for the big God. If you're praying for a movement, you got to wait till God decides he's going to move. And he's not going to move just uh, with you, but he's going to move around everything that concerns you. Hallelujah. If your job concerns you, he'll move in your job. If your, if your finances concern you, he'll move in your finances. If your, if your body concerns you, he'll move in your body. But he's going to do it his way and in his own time and according to his word. Cornelius had a word from the Lord. Every now and then, God comes by to encourage us. He may send a preacher. He may send a friend. He might even send somebody that you don't like to give you a word from God. If he can use a donkey, surely he can use your enemy as well. Hallelujah. And God told Cornelius, he said, now, I've heard you, and I've watched what you do. Those are two important words, talking and walking. We, we talked about that last week. God wants not only your talk, but he wants your walk. Amen. He wants your walking. And this man, Cornelius, he was a Roman soldier. He was, he was of Rome. He was, he was a tough guy. He was like a Marine. But yet he loved God. See, it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter the circumstances you're in. What matters is, do you love God? Do you love Jesus? Do you love him enough? 
to wait on him? Do you love him enough to give to his service? Do you love him enough to serve him? Do you love him enough to, to endure? Do you love him enough to stay and wait until he comes and does what he needs to do? And Cornelius had been waiting and praying and saved and, and serving. And it says that he was a devout man. There's something about seeking God that makes you more devout. It makes you more devoted to God instead of less devoted uh, because I believe that God gave Cornelius some evidence that he was hearing his prayers. It may have just been his family staying together. It may have just been uh, his job that he had continuing. Whatever it was, Cornelius was not discouraged because he didn't see the answer to prayer. Somehow, in your discouragement, if you keep praying, God will encourage you in your prayers. God will encourage you in those silent moments. God will encourage you in those times when you think that God has moved away. God will encourage you. It may be just holding your family together. It may be a friend coming by and touching you and saying a few words. I don't know what it is, but understand you've got to be sensitive enough to understand when God is moving in your life. Many of us miss God because we're looking for him in the big things. We're looking for him in the grand things. We're looking for him with the, with the big stuff. But I've learned when you pray to God, it's the little things that you begin to notice about God. When you can see the little blessings that, oh, glory to God. When you see the little blessings that God is blessing you with. When you, when, when you can see you lose your keys and you ask the Holy Spirit to show you where it is. And after a while, God just in a flash of a moment says, here it is right over here. Just go right over there. That's God. You've got to praise him in the little bitty things. We're wanting the big things from God, but we're failing to appreciate and to thank God for the little things that he does. Just getting up in the morning is a big thing, but we count it as a little thing. Just being able to see is a big thing, but we count it as a little thing. Just be having a home over our heads, a roof in our, in our homes and over our heads is a big thing, but we count it as a little thing. I just want you to understand that it's not about the cars. It's not about the money. It's not about the position. It's not about the power. It's not about the stuff. It's about God and appreciating God in the little things. And when you learn to appreciate him in the little things, I may not have a steak, but I thank God I got a bologna sandwich. I may not have a house on a hill, but I thank God I got a shack in the valley. Amen. When you get to that point, that's when God is ready. Some of us are not ready for God to answer the quest, answer the prayer because our hearts are not fixed like they need to be. Let me go on. Our subject title, When God Speaks. I could have added, When God Speaks, Are You Listening? Are You Listening? Are you listening? Continuing one of the principles of Dr. Stanley's that he shared, and we would just want to share it. To walk in the spirit is to obey the initial promptings of the spirit. In other words, if you want to walk in the spirit, you've got to obey the little things that God prompts you to do or to say or to be. Y'all let that sink in. If you're resisting in the prompting, how can God cultivate a heart to receive the bigger things that he has for us? If you're delaying what God is telling you, how can God take you to the next level. If God is telling you, hey, I want you to go and serve, and he's been prompting you, but you've been saying, no, I don't have time. 
Let somebody else do it. And then you wonder why things don't go so well in your life. Because if you're not faithful in the little thing that God prompts you, how can you be faithful in the big things that God wants to do in your life? We're looking for the big things, the grand things. The, 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 the Pharisees were looking for a mili- I mean, the, the, the disciples were looking for a military leader. They were looking for somebody to come in and, and turn the world upside down. They weren't looking for a meek and lowly person like Jesus. And Judas, he just couldn't take it. So he just betrayed him. But the people of Israel were looking for somebody that would overthrow Rome. See, we're looking for the big things out from God, but we're not faithful in the little things of God. We're not faithful in our prayer. We're not faithful in our giving. We're not faithful in our loving. We're not faithful in our sharing. We're not faithful in the things that God has already prompted us to do. And not only prompted us to do, but then we'll delay what he would have us to do. God could prompt us to get up this morning and call somebody and just pray with them. But because of our schedule, because of our busyness, because we are doing something else, then the prompting of God is ignored. And then you wonder why he doesn't answer you in the big thing, because he's prompting you in the little things. And if you're not responding to the little things, he's not going to allow the bigger things to take place. It's like building a foundation. You can build a house, but if you don't have a foundation, it'll soon fall. We've got to follow the prompting of God. Sometimes that means that we may not fully understand what God is or why God is telling us to do something or to say something. I remember one time I was sitting in a restaurant and this person came in and they were they were they were kind of dirty and kind of rugged, but uh, they got a cup of water and they sat down uh, a few tables around. I was sitting there reading my Bible. I was on lunch break and I was was reading my Bible and God just told me instantly, he said, go and get them something to eat because they're hungry. And I I was going to argue with God. I said, well, I don't know them. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, I, they don't know me. I don't know them. I, I really don't want to do it. I, 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 I was a little nervous. I said they could do something to it. I don't know what I was thinking. But God said, go get them something. They're hungry. And so I got up. And I told the manager at the restaurant. Uh, they, the, some of the employees had said, well, she said she was hungry. And they didn't give her anything. They just gave her some water. And I said, well, it wasn't left up to you. God told me to do it. And they said, well, we can get, no. God told me to get her something to eat. And so I paid them for the meal. I went over and set the meal down. And I just said, God bless you and enjoy. And the person said, well, will you sit and talk with me? I said, well, I've got a, another meeting. And I gave her my card. And I said, if you need some help, just give, a, give me a call. And we'll get you some help. And, uh, and that was the last time I saw her. But that's prompting of God. God prompts us to get out of our comfort zone. God prompts us to do what nobody else does. We're, we're busy thinking, well, what does what somebody else is going to do or what somebody else thinks? You know, I'm, God is freeing me from all of that. Well, what they going to think? Well, look at them. It, it, it doesn't matter. You just hear God and you respond immediately. Hear God and respond immediately. If you're going to walk in the spirit, meaning your lifestyle is going to be spirit led, then you've got to begin obeying the immediate prompting of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit may say, close your mouth. (laughs) 
Sometimes the Holy Spirit may say, give this amount. Sometimes the Holy Spirit may say, well, go over here and pray with this person. Sometimes the Holy Spirit can tell you to just stop and be still. Say a kind word to somebody who's been harsh to you. Oh, glory to God. Somebody who has mistreated you. Somebody who has lied upon you. Somebody who has hurt you. Somebody who has broken their promises. The Holy Spirit says pray for them. And you're just struggling because you don't want to pray for them. You're like Jonah. You go, instead of God telling you to go to Nineveh, God telling you to go to Nineveh, you go in the opposite direction. But if you want to walk in the spirit, meaning you want to be sp spirit filled and spirit led, then you've got to obey the prompting of God immediately. When God speaks to you, you've got to obey what he says. That way he can grow you and take you to the next level where you can walk with him. Amen. The background of this particular chapter it talks about the visions, the visions. It talks about the vision uh, that, that, that uh, Peter had and, 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 and God uh, answering prayers and uh, Cornelius being faithful and, and opening eyes and all of that. Gentiles uh, saved, not just other people. This chapter is about a whole new revelation to Paul, I mean to Peter and the world. Amen. Because before that, it was uh, just thought that the Jews were the only ones that could get the Holy Spirit. God may prompt you to speak to somebody that you may not racially get along with or, or want to. Amen. Peter had to cross the line. It was illegal, according to the Jewish law, for Peter to go into the house of a Gentile. But God wanted to show Peter that he is no respect of persons. And God wants to show you that he is no respect of persons. If he tells you to go to somebody of a different ethnicity, you just go and leave the results up to God. If God tells you to, to help an enemy, help feed them, you just go. You might be feeling angry. You might be feeling upset. But you just go and do what God prompts you to do and leave the rest in God's hands. Amen. And amen. This created a whole revolution for the Gentiles. It showed the Jews that they didn't have the market on God. God is no respect of persons. God wants to save and to heal and to deliver not only us, but all people who will come to him in faith. Amen. 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 Sometimes the spirit prompts action. Causes us to have to take a risk. Causes us to have to lay down our tradition. Our, our, our prejudices. Yeah, P Peter was prejudiced. Amen. <laughs> he was prejudiced. <laughs> I said that with a big P. He was prejudiced. But you see, God through Christ can use us in spite of our prejudice. And deliver us out of that prejudice amen. amen and i wonder all the people who claim to be christian but yet hold such anger and vindictiveness to the point they will become violent and kill other people i wonder how they justify that to the to the lord if the lord loves everybody and wants to share with everybody his goodness and his greatness, how can we be so judgmental as to go and do things because they are a little bit different than we are? They have a little bit different orientation than we do. They have a different color skin than we do. They have different cultural uh, norms than we do. It doesn't matter. In the end, what matters is Jesus Christ. And what matters is us loving Jesus enough to get out of our comfort zone and tell somebody that we may not get along with that Jesus saves. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Sometimes the Holy Spirit prompts us and we have to take a risk. 
We have to take a risk. It may, you may be rejected. You may be despised. But just understand that Jesus was rejected. And Jesus was despised. And Jesus was talked about. And Jesus was misunderstood. And Jesus was lied upon. Even the very people that beat him and, and sped upon him and hurt him and all those things. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. The Holy Spirit prompts us to take a risk sometimes. The Holy Spirit may prompt us with surprises. We want everything predictable, but the Holy Spirit may surprise us. He surprised me that day. I didn't expect nothing like, like that. But I believe because I prompted, the Holy Spirit prompted me to do it. I believe that that touched that person's life in a real way. I never saw him again, but I just believe it does. God don't have you to do anything for nothing. There's always a reason why God wants you to do it. You may not know the reason. You just do it when he prompts you. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till the next day. Don't wait till somebody else does it or, so, or you want somebody. See if somebody else is going to do it. You do it right then, right there. If somebody says pray, I get tickled. Oh, pray for me. <laughs> well, why can't you just pray right now? Amen? Amen. <laughs> you don't have to wait till you get home. You don't have to wait till you sit down in your own personal study. Pray right then, right there. Amen. 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 What a witness for Christ. Amen. Amen. Sometimes he makes, he, he, he prompts us and we, it's a risk. Sometimes he prompts us and it's a surprise. Sometimes he prompts us and it's a revelation. In this particular book, there was a revelation. He saw, Peter saw, saw the Holy Spirit enter into the Gentiles as well. They began to speak with other tongues. The same God that saved Peter also saved Cornelius, the Gentile. We get some, some, some revelations of God, some illumination that God is not limited by what we think God is limited by. He's not limited by color of skin. He's not limited by culture. He's not limited by our traditions. He's not limited by what we say or what we think. He's not limited by our feelings or, or what we've experienced. He's not limited. If we are move when he prompts us to move we'll see something that God will show us that we didn't know before hallelujah the fourth thing the evidence that God's working Peter was able to see that God works on people had Peter refused to go and Peter said, no, no, I'm not going. God first sent him a, 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 a preparation vision. When God wants you to do something, believe me, he has already prepared you to do it. Amen. You're not going in cold. He's already prepared you to do it. Three times he sent a vision to Peter with animals on it. And a sheep dropped down and the animals were on it. And the Lord told him, take kill and eat. Eat this. And Peter in his tradition said, no, these are unclean. That was the Jewish law. But the Lord told him, what I have cleaned, don't call unclean. What I have saved, don't call unsaved. What I have created, don't think it's trash because they don't have clothes that you have. They don't have the car that you drive. They don't smell so good. They don't look so good. They don't act so good. Don't despise that because I created them. I blew in the nostrils the breath of life. Don't despise them. You just do as I prompt you to do in the spirit. Hallelujah. Let me go on. The fifth thing Peter had Peter learned, and we can learn from this, is that walls are torn down. Walls get torn down. Preconceived ideas are removed. 
preconceived ideas are not necessarily a hindrance to God. When you follow God, it's not going to be in a traditional way. It's not going to be in a convenient way. When you follow God, God will take you to unconventional and a lot of times uncomfortable situations. Amen. 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 The sixth thing I want to say is sometimes you're going to be uncomfortable. Amen. You're going to be uncomfortable when God prompts you. You're going to be uncomfortable. But it's not about comfort. It's about obedience. Amen. And I'm preaching to me. It's about obedience. It's about obedience to the spirit. The seventh thing, it's going to be non-traditional. When God prompts you, when the Holy Spirit prompts you, it's going to be something that you're not used to. It's, it's going to be something that is different for you. It's going to be something that you hadn't experienced before. But when you are prompted by the Holy Spirit, which is the eighth thing I want to say, when you're prompted by the Holy Spirit, you have an inner peace when you obey. When you obey. When you do what the Spirit says do, right then, you have a peace inside of your heart. Amen. The Holy Spirit, when we are prompted by God, can stir up our daily lives with uneasiness sometimes. Sometimes you're just not comfortable because you have not yielded to the power of the Holy Spirit and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. You wonder why you're nervous. You wonder why you're depressed. You wonder why you're anxious. You're wondering why you just can't seem to get going. Start following the Holy Spirit's prompting. Amen. Tenth thing is, when we're prompted by the Holy Spirit, it brings glory to God. It brings glory to God. Brings glory to God. Brings glory to God. When you prompted by the Holy Spirit, God is going to get the glory for it when you obey it. He's going to get the glory. And a lot of times when you're prompted, the eleventh thing, a lot of things when you're prompted by the Holy Spirit, there's going to be a certain amount of uncertainty in your life. There's going to be a certain amount of uncertainty. You're not certain what's going to happen. You're not, and that's a, that's a very uncomfortable place to be because we like to know what's going to happen before it happens. Amen. We like to know what's going to go on before it goes on. But a lot of times the instant prompting of the Holy Spirit and we obey it, uh, we are uncertain as to what's going to happen. We don't know if we share a scripture, if they're going to hate us, reject us, curse us out, or, or what have you. But still, when the Holy Spirit prompts you to do something, do it right then. Amen. Let's answer the question now, how do we walk in the Spirit? How do we walk in in the spirit. How do we walk in the spirit? The first, the first thing before you can walk in the spirit, you've got to have the spirit. In John 1, John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, to as many as received him, to him gave them the power to become the children of God. You won't have the prompting of the spirit other than the conviction that you need Christ. And when he convicts you that you are lost, that you need Christ, that's the time to obey right then. Because unless the Holy Spirit prompts you to come to the Lord, you will never, ever come to the Lord. So don't take the prompting of the Holy Spirit for granted that's God saying, I want to save you. I want to keep you from eternal separation. I want to bless your life with abundance. I want to use you for my glory and your good. I want to bless your life. 
I want you to be blessed and I want you to be a blessing, but I'm prompting you now, letting you know that you are a sinner, that you are lost, and I'm prompting you to come and receive Jesus Christ. I have placed in you of uh, the spirit so that you can know that Jesus is Lord and that you can believe on him and confess with your mouth and be believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. The Holy Spirit brings us, prompts us to come to Christ. The longer you delay that prompting, the more subtle that prompting may become to the point where he doesn't prompt you anymore. If you want to be separated from God eternally, just keep rejecting his prompting to come to Christ. And eventually, it'll go away. That's hard stuff right there. But it's God's prompting. It's God through the Holy Spirit saying, today, you need to give your life to Christ. Today, you need to recommit your life to Christ. Today, you need to forgive somebody. Today, you need to call that person that you never called before because you're angry with. Today, if you receive that prompting of God, respond to it. So if you're going to walk in the spirit, the first thing is you've got to have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Secondly, you must yield and stay yielded to the Holy Spirit. It's not a roller coaster. It's not one day I yield, the next day it's about me, the next day it's about God, the next day it's about me. No, he said, stay yielded to the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 13, and 14 talks about being yielded and led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many times we don't yield to the Spirit, we yield to the flesh. Amen. Amen. And you can find in Galatians 5, 21, 22, if you want to see what the flesh is all about. And you can, you'll find yourself. If you need a diagnosis, you look in that list and you'll, you'll see where you are. Amen. 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 You must stay yielded to the spirit. Thirdly, you must trust the Holy Spirit to guide you. You must trust the Holy Spirit to guide you. In other words, you got to trust God to be prompted and led by God. Amen. You may have some doubts, but I'm talking about believing God. Believing God. If God says your keys are over there, you can either say, I don't believe they're over there. I look, I don't see them. But the Holy Spirit says, yeah, they're right over there. You can either believe the Holy Spirit or you can go on with your own uh, intellect and intuition and miss the blessing. Amen. So you must trust the Holy Spirit to guide you. And the way you trust the Holy Spirit is you have to remember what he's already done. And what he's already revealed and what he's already shown you. Over time, somehow we forget. When a new situation comes in our life, we forget what God has done in the past. Amen. Amen. If he did it in the past, <laughs> he'll do it right. He'll do it today. And not only that, but he'll do it tomorrow. Amen. 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 That's the thing about God. You can trust him. We trust uh, financial advisors. <laughs> we trust bankers. And we trust all those people. And those people can only know what the present is and some past history. They don't really know the, the future. They can predict, but that's an element of unknown. But you want to trust the one who not only knows the past and knows the present, but you want to trust the one who knows the future. He knows where you're going before you get there. So why not trust the Holy Spirit of God? Amen. To guide you and to lead you. He will never fail you. He won't fail you. Let me go on. The fourth thing, you must listen for the Holy Spirit's prompting. You must listen for the Holy Spirit's prompting. Oh, that other scripture, um, 
about being guided by the Holy Spirit. That's 1 Thessalonians 5.19. I want y'all to just look at these scriptures later. You must listen for the Holy Spirit's prompting. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. You must listen for the Holy Spirit's prompting. That means your ears must be sensitive to God. How does your ears get sensitive to God? Through reading God's word, to spending time in prayer, through uh, experiencing what God has done. And so when God speaks, you listen. You listen. God is not going to contradict his word. God is not going to contradict himself. So you can listen to God. That's why the proverbial writer Solomon said, lean not to thine own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You must listen for the Holy Spirit's prompting. The devil will be trying to prompt you too, but usually the devil will always, the devil is going to appeal to the flesh. He's going to appeal to the flesh. He's going to appeal to the pride of life. He's going to appeal to the lust of the eyes. In other words, he's going, to, he's going to come to you and say, well, look what you can have. That's what he did to Jesus. Look what you can get. He tried to appeal to pride. Amen. You can be like me. You can be God. You can be like God. And he wants to appeal to the flesh. Don't that feel good? Don't that look good? You deserve this. You deserve that. And all of those things. But you must listen to God, God's spirit. And the more you listen, the easier it'll be to hear him. Amen. Amen. If he's coming to you, he, say, if Satan is coming to you, he's going to come to you in those three areas. He's either going to come to you in your pride, he's going to come to you in your flesh, or he's going to come to you in your desire for something that looks good. Amen. And many times Christians yield to the flesh. They yield to pride. And then they wonder why their life is upside down. They wonder why they're all torn up. Because they have allowed Satan to rise up in their pride. And not follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And they end up struggling when God had for them. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Pride is something that God hates. And pride is something that will rise up real quick if you don't detect it. Well, how do I know if I got pride? Because it's about you. It's, you are always at the center. It's about you and nobody else. Then you know it's your pride. Amen. Amen. Let me move on. I, I, we'll preach on this later. But if you want to see the areas Satan attacks you, look at uh, 1 John chapter 2, around verse 15 or so. Let me move on. The fifth thing is that you must be available. You must be available. If you want the prompting of God to, to, to work in your life, the prompting of his spirit, you've got to make yourself available to the spirit. Amen. Psalms 46 verse 10 says what? Be still. And know that I am God. You must be available. Let me move on. Number six. You must not grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter four, verse 30. Grieving the Holy Spirit means you resist the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're resisting. The Holy Spirit is saying, this is what I want you to do. But you, you don't do it. You don't want to do it. You'd rather not do it. And so you procrastinate. You put it off. You make excuses. You make excuses. We're talking about when God speaks. Because the Holy Spirit is God. They're co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent. The Holy Spirit is the, is, is the comforter, the guide, the one who leads you into truth. And so this is God in us. Amen. This is God in us. And you can grieve the Holy Spirit by not being sensitive and by not being active when the Holy Spirit prompts you. Let me move on. 
The seventh thing is you must not quench. We're talking about if you're going to walk in the spirit. You must not quench the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 as well. Quench not the spirit. That means you ignore it pretty much. You ignore it. Have you ever been ignored? You know what that feels like to be ignored. You know, you're getting you're 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 pouring out truth and all of this, and you just being ignored. Makes you feel kind of bad. Well, the Holy Spirit <laughs> gets quenched. Meaning, hey, I'm I'm prompting you to go move and move and move. And you're not doing it. You're not doing it. You're not responding. You're, you're, you're making excuses. You're quenching. You're trying to put it out. Trying to ignore it. Maybe I can drink it out. Maybe I can smoke it out. Maybe I can uh, get in various relationships and make it go away. Maybe I can... I can, I can uh, work harder and work longer hours. Maybe I can do all this and do all that and, 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 and not pay attention to the spirit and, and, and try to drown it out. Maybe I can snort something. Maybe I can shoot something. Maybe I can spend time with a lot of people. Maybe I can go on a vacation. Maybe I can do all of these things, but yet the spirit of God is still there. But you're still, but you're trying to put water on it because you don't want the prompting of the spirit to to begin to to dictate to your life what needs to be done. So you pile stuff over it until you dilute it down, until you think you can't feel it. But I'm so glad that God is greater in us than he that is in the world. I'm so glad you can't put the fire of God out. You might. Bring it down low a little bit, but you can't put that fire out. And some of us are, are going through anxiety and depression and all of these things because we're trying to quench the spirit. God is saying, I want you to repent and to come to me, but we're pouring water on it. We're pouring excuses on it. We're pouring uh, pro a procrastination on it. We're pouring projection. That's somebody else's fault. But God's saying now, today, Today, stop trying to quench. Stop trying to put it out because I'm not going anywhere because if I go somewhere, you in real trouble. If I stop prompting your life, you in real trouble. Amen. Let me go on. The eighth thing, you must not harden your heart. If you're going to walk in the spirit, you have to have a sensitive heart. Well, how do you keep a sensitive heart? By obeying Christ. By obeying the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 8 says, harden not your heart. Hardening your heart means that you think you have a better idea and plan than God. Hardening in your heart means that I'm, I'm not fooling with this God stuff. I'm going to do it my way. That's what it is. Pharaoh was a great example of a hard heart. It wasn't that God hardened his heart. God just wouldn't let him repent. He exposed everything that was in his heart. Amen. Amen. The ninth thing. Respond to the Holy Spirit's prompting Immediately, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15 says, today, if you hear my voice, today, today, not tomorrow, not yesterday, not the next day, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. And the last one, if we're going to walk in the spirit, by the prompting of the Spirit. Know that the Holy Spirit opens and closes doors in our lives. Amen. The Holy Spirit opens and closes doors in our lives. But the good news is if you follow the prompting of God's Spirit, it's just a matter of time before that next door is going to open. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit prepares you for the greatest blessings that you can receive on this side of heaven. 
And that means sometimes he has to close some doors. And sometimes that means he has to open some doors. Amen. Paul in, in Acts chapter 16, you can read that chapter. Paul was going all over revisiting the churches and God told him not to go to this particular area. And, and, and the Holy Spirit, he says the Holy Spirit wouldn't allow him. And he was wondering, well, what's going on? Why can't I go here or go there? And Paul didn't go. He listened to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And then there was a man by the, in, in Macedonia said, come over and help us. Sometimes God's got to close the door and stop us so we can hear from him, so we can realize somebody else or some other situation is uh, needful of our gifts and our service. So, he, so God has to close some doors. That job kept you too busy. <laughs> that situation took up too much of your time. You didn't have time to even pray and study. That's why you have to make God the priority. And he says, if, if I close a door, I'm going to open the door. God will take care of you. He says, seek first. The kingdom of heaven. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about paying your bills. Don't worry about all of that. I will provide all of that. But seek me first and my promptings. And see, don't I supply all of your needs? He promised that. He promised that. Sometimes we, through our flesh and our pride, cut off our own blessing because our ego gets in the way. Our pride gets in the way. Well, I'm not going to take this. I'm not going to do that. And then you end up suffering. But even in the suffering, God's mercy is there. Amen. And God's teaching is there in the midst of your suffering. So I just want you to know today, if you want to walk in the spirit, that means you got to obey the initial, God shouldn't have to ask it 20 times. One of the things that would irritate me uh, to no end if I have to ask somebody to do something 20 times. You know how that is as a parent. <laughs> really, uh, my grandparents, they'd say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this one time, and then you better get on it. Amen. God is not our grandparent, but he says, if you'll obey the initial prompting, sometimes God prompts us to close our mouths. Sometimes God prompts us to be still. Sometimes God prompts us to move away. Sometimes God prompts us to, to just give a card or give an encouraging word or, or just share a prayer or, or, or whatever God prompts you to do. He knows what he's doing. It'll be good for you, and it'll be good for the other person. Cornelius was blessed, and Peter was blessed. Cornelius' family was blessed. Peter was now able to go beyond the Jews and minister to the Gentiles as well with a new revelation of God who has no respect of persons. When God speaks, how do you respond? Do you delay? Do you carry it out? Or do you just shake it off and dismiss it? Sometimes God brings it around two or three times. And then sometimes he doesn't bring that opportunity around ever again. You don't know how God is going to do. He told Moses, I'll have mercy on whom I will have mercy. It's up to him. And how he shows his mercy is through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So harden not your heart today. If God is prompting you to recommit your life, do it. If God is prompting you to give your life to Christ, do it. If God is prompting you to start serving, do it. If God is prompting you to 
apologize to somebody. Do it. Whatever it is, do it. Do it. As God is speaking to you. I hope you receive this word today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your, your people. And I know, Lord, your word would not come back void, but it will accomplish everything you sent for it to do. We pray, oh God, that we have said everything you wanted us to say. Now we're trusting your Holy Spirit to prompt and move in the hearts of people. And we know that it may not feel good initially, but it'll do good e eventually and eternally. So have thine own way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. We'd like to extend to you now the invitation, the opportunity to come and make Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord if you've never done that. Perhaps you sense in your spirit that God is saying, yes, it's time to give your heart to the Lord. Respond by saying yes. Maybe you like to recommit your life to God because God is prompting you saying you have strayed away. Please come back. The songwriter says softly, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you. If you have a special need in your life for prayer, we'd like to touch in prayer with you. If the Lord is leading you to become part of this particular body of believers, to serve the Lord, to learn of the Lord, to give unto the Lord's work, we invite you to come. The only requirement is that you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Whatever your need is today, the Lord is the answer. And the prompting of the Holy Spirit, if you will, if you will respond immediately, there will be a blessing for you. And as he blesses you, you will bless others. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion majesty, power, and might, henceforth now and forevermore. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, joy, hope, and love in the Holy Spirit. This is our prayer. Fill us anew and afresh with your spirit and your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, we lift our hands and hearts to you. To you be all the glory, all the majesty, and all the might and power. Worthy is the Lamb, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you and you.